first, I wanted to show you how a diesel heater works. I just want to double check that the heater fits in the hole. The most important thing with the fuel pump is to mount it on a 15 to 35 degree angle. We now have a really bad smell and the drill's not working. It's getting super dark now, so we're working with the torch. <laughs> and now there's hot air coming out of the heater. Hi, we're Hannah and Myron. We live in our Southfield camper van and travel all over Europe. At the moment, we're in the UK and for the last couple of weeks, we've been converting a van for my mum. It's getting cold, so in today's video, we're gonna install a diesel heater and show you just how to do it. Winter has hit and it is freezing. So we need to get a diesel heater installed into the van ASAP. We've partnered with Matter Online for this video and they've given us the Everspacker D2 heater and we're going to show you how to install it. First, I wanted to show you how a diesel heater works. Air is sucked in from the outside of the van into the combustion chamber along with a small amount of diesel which is pumped in by the fuel pump. It burns inside the combustion chamber, heats up the heater and then leaves through the exhaust and is quietened by the muffler. Inside air is drawn through a fan and is warmed up by passing around a heat exchanger that surrounds the combustion chamber and is blown out of the heater through ducting to heat up your van and make it nice and toasty warm. So the first thing to do is to decide where you're going to be mounting the heater. You want somewhere flat and that underneath the van there's no chassis rails or suspension points nearby. In the sprinters we find that in the passenger seat is the perfect place. If you've got a double seat like this, this one's got a lot of wiring in the middle so you'll have to install it in the outer seat. So now we're going to pop underneath the van, have a look at what's there and then mark out anything we need to watch out for. So underneath the vehicle, that's the hole I could see before. I'm just going to measure to the side and to the other side because I want to mount it in this flat area here. Seven centimetres. Eight centimetres. In 10 centimeters. 7, 8, 10. Not this area, not this area, but this area. So now we'll be drilling seven holes through the floor. The outer four are just studs and then on the underneath we'll put a nut on it to squeeze it against the van. The This one here closest to the fuel inlet is the intake so air will be sucked in from underneath the van into it. Diesel will also be pumped in through this one, it'll burn and then it will come out the exhaust into the muffler and then outside the van. So this is the inlet of the heater here, this will be sucking cold air from inside your van, heating it up and then blowing it out this way. You can tell because this one here has the aluminium heat exchanger at the back. So we're going to be mounting it this way so then the heat gets blown down into the van. We'll put this gasket down a little bit and then kind of put it in place on where it kind of looks good in this area. We could either have it going straight like that, or we could have it on a bit of an angle. I think angle like we had it, I think it made more yeah. sense. I felt like there was more room for the intake to get air. Yeah. What I'm going to do is just hold it in place and then line up with one hand and then I'm going to push the rubber gasket down. And then I'll use that for a template for drilling the holes. Perfect! So now I've drilled the holes and filed them, which I'll double check that the heater fits in the hole. Perfect! Perfect! Now we need to take it back out, paint the holes so they don't rust, and then we can bolt it in there. Let's clean these sharpie marks off. Now let's paint it. So now the paint's dry, we got the rubber gasket on the heater and now we're going to put it through the holes. Now we're going to use these washers and nuts that came in the kit to bolt the heater down to the floor of the van. Being underneath the van is the worst part of the job, so while we're underneath there now, we're going to do everything underneath the van at once. So we're going to do the fuel line and fuel pump now. You can either have an external tank, which is like one of those 10 litre plastic containers that you have inside, or you can hook it up to your diesel tank in the vehicle. We're going to be installing it to the diesel tank in the vehicle. It's not necessarily the easiest, but it's the easiest once it's installed. Because you only fill out with one place and it works quite well. Depending on your type of van, it might already have an auxiliary fuel line on the fuel tank. Ours didn't, so we had to drop the tank and then install one ourselves. We'll put another link to an old video where we did that, 
But for this one we've already installed that and we already have the fuel line coming out from the tank. So we've got our fuel pump, the bracket that holds the fuel pump, the blue fuel line that comes with it and then also these little bits of um, thicker fuel line and this goes over the blue fuel line and then joins up to things like this or the other blue fuel line that's already on the tank. And then we also have all these clamps that then join the fuel line together. The most important thing with the fuel pump is to mount it on a 15 to 35 degree angle. Different brands have different amounts of angle that they want so check with your user manual as to how much of an angle yours needs. Make sure you check what way around the pump goes. So underneath the vehicle I've put the intake and exhaust on. The exhaust is the silver one and I'm just kind of putting it and seeing where would be a good place for it to go. I think here's quite a nice place. It's the fuller neck right here. But if you put it over here, that should be far enough away from it. The air intake, I'm thinking I might run that towards the front of the vehicle. And then the fuel pump, if I pull this exhaust one over this way, when I mount it, I think here might be a good place for the fuel pump to be mounted. So this is the fuel system done. It comes out from the tank runs to the fuel pump and then loops around and then goes into the fuel inlet and this is the exhaust system for the unit the exhaust gas will come down go through the tube through the muffler which should make it a bit quieter and then it comes out this little end here and now we have the exhaust done it's still got plenty of room from the pump it's quite a fixed tube like if you push it out of the way it'll stay there which is quite nice and it then runs down the van. We mounted the little muffler on the sill here and the little exhaust pipe goes out to there. We'll fix that exhaust pipe to the chassis as well to make sure it doesn't just flop around or like dangle down too low. And for the intake pipe I just ran that down into there and then cable tied it in place. So the last thing to do under the van is to run the two wires to the fuel pump so that can pump. And this jumble of wires, it was a lot tidy when we got it, we've opened it up and looked at it a few times. Basically all it is is one plug to plug into the heater itself. There's one set of wires to plug into your control panel. There's your positive and negative wire. And then the two wires that go to the fuel pump. And that's it for wiring. So it's not, it's scary when you first look at it, but it is only four connections. One's to the heater, power and fuel pump and yeah so let's run these wires through a little hole that we have next to the heater and then put them into the fuel pump we'll leave a link below for more information on the wiring so while we're here we're just going to click this on it's a D shape so there's only one way you can actually plug it in so you just push that on snap and it's in easy nice so the fuel line wires they give you are super long so we have to cut these back So it's from down here, it runs along, it goes all the way down there. It's like 10 meters away. Yeah, it'd be good if you had like a super duper long sprinter or something. A truck, I guess, yeah. maybe. Or make the canal boat, the 40 foot yeah. canal boat, yeah. probably. So this is the plug for the fuel pump. It c doesn't come together, so that way you can put these through a much smaller hole than you could do this one here. They're labeled one and two. One's meant to have the brown wire. I have been told that it doesn't matter if they're around the wrong way. There we go. And push them in until you hear a little click. Make sure they're all pushed in and don't come out. And then we'll just clip this onto the fuel pump. And then that's the wiring for that one done. Easy. Easy. So I've cut back the fuel pump wires and just got them this long, just that way there's not a huge coil. I've also pushed all the other wires through this hole and then later on we'll be running it up through here to get it over to power, to be powered by their leisure batteries. So now we're going to be drilling a hole in the back of the seat for the hot air from the heater to come out into where we're living. We have a hole saw which is 
I think 68 or 86, it's rubbed off. I think it's 58. 58, yeah. But it's the same size as this. We'll put up on screen what actual size is. <laughs> but it's basically the same size as this, so then this part will go through, and then it will just stay on this little lip here, and then we'll screw it on on the inside of the seat. So usually this is probably the best place to do it, on this big flat surface here, so that this sits nice and flush. But what we're actually going to be doing is building a step that comes along here for more piping to run through and then run into the rest of the living area. So we want our hole as low down as possible, which is going to look a bit funny for now while that step's not there and we do have that attached to it. It's not going to be nice and flush, but it just means that mum can be nice and warm until we've done that step. As with all holes, do a pilot hole first, and then the arbor of the hole saw fits in nicely. Especially because this one you can't see through it, okay. so it is very hard to, if you're trying to drill a hole here, to like line it up because you can't see it. We now have a really bad smell and the drill's not working, so that's not a good idea. But I mean, on the good side, we got the hole cap. Yeah. <laughs> At least it wasn't halfway Ooh, through. Oh, it's hot. It's very it hot. It sounds so bad. Oh it my god. It's terrible. I hope, I hope we've just like killed the battery and not the whole drill. Ooh. It's getting super dark now, so we're working with the torch. It is. <laughs> so now we're trying to hook up the positive and negative. For some reason in Germany, brown's the black for negative. So we're just going to put a little hook terminal on it, so then we can attach it to the chassis of the van. Took it up to negative, so just crimp. Nice. And now we need to build the fuse box. So it comes separate, it comes without any terminals, so that way you can feed it through walls and stuff easier. But it does mean that you have to terminate your own fuse holding terminals onto this thingy. <laughs> I have no idea. I haven't done this before at all. So, bear with me. These wires that go from the fuse box to the battery already are terminated. So what I'm going to do is just copy what these ones look like onto these ones here, because I haven't done these before. <laughs> so, the yellow one is for the bigger hole, because... The bigger wire. The bigger wire. So as you can see on these little blue ones, they have a super little hole in it. The yellow one had a bigger hole, so the bigger wire went through that one and we can just push this one awesome that looks good and then this is the terminal here so the fuse actually goes into here in between here and this part here goes with a little bit of the wire through I have no idea what the actual tool for this job is. I don't think it's any of these ones and I don't think it's any of these ones. It might be a specialty one. Yeah, so I'm just trying to like slowly bend them over using a combination of these and these and... The different sizes. Yeah, to try and squeeze it together. And underneath we're just going to push this up through. That's that nice works and well. Tight. And then we'll push this one up through on another run. That clicked in, which sounds good. We'll hook the other yellow terminal up to this yellow one here as well. So make sure you do yellow to yellow and blue to blue. Yeah. Or big wire to big wire, little wire to little wire. Maybe this one needs to be around the other way. There we go. Oh, there we go. Cool, and now you can see the little terminals there. So when you put your fuse in it, it joins the two wires together. So we want a 5 amp fuse for the small wire and a 20 amp fuse for the big wire. There's two fuses because that way if a surge happens or something goes wrong, you'll either blow your controller or you'll blow the heater. You won't blow both if they were joined together. The heater also comes with a 10 and a 25 amp fuse just to confuse you. You don't need these at all. <laughs> Keep them for something else in your build. Yeah. And then we can pop the little cap over. That was quite cool, building my own little fuse box. <laughs> Better keep going before it gets much darker. Yeah. So now we need to terminate these ends with the same kind of ring connections, then we can hook these onto our batteries. Oh, 
So now we have the negative and we have the two positives with a 20 amp fuse and a 5 amp fuse. They also have this little diagnostics thing which you can basically ignore I guess. Yeah. Unless unless someone you're getting a diagnostics done. Yeah. You just leave it for now. Yeah. So now to hook these up to a battery and see Go. if it works. Yeah. Or plug the controller in, but that's just an easy plug in. <laughs> yeah. Let's do the controller now. Yeah. So we've got this nice Easy Start Pro controller. It just simply clips in together the way around. Can only go in one way, yeah. so you'll know you're doing it yeah. right. The other plug here just goes to a temperature sensor if you were to have another one, but this already has a temperature sensor built in, and so does the heater, so yeah. These other five loose wires go to the old control panel. So I think we just only have to put tape over the top of them to make sure none of them are positives and none of them have power running to them. That's the controller, it looks nice. It's got a little dial here that you can turn. So now everything's installed, it's time to turn it on. We've got the Easy Start Pro controller and it's got this one button here which also has a dial around it. So you can use this like this to go through got to make sure on the right setting so that would be fan this is heating then you click it once to set the temperature then you click it again to confirm that's the temperature you want then this is the timer and you can have it there's a whole range of times that we, we, um, infinity seems to work best and then you can just turn it off later select that and then now it's going on you can see it's got red around here which means it's going on that's how the controller works and now there's hot air coming out of the heater. <sighs> Winter has hit and it is freezing. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to build an igloo around your camper van to keep warm during the winter. Why don't we just install a diesel heater? That would make a lot more sense. Let's do that. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe.